Hello, more beta functions today. This time we're not going to be doing trigonometric integrals. We're going to be doing other integrals which are associated with the beta function. That's why I call it beta, beta type integrals. Um, so what results we need to, to be having in here? Um, we need to actually have the definition of the beta function. Let's write it here. The beta of m comma n is of course the integral from 0 to 1 x and 1 minus x. And remember, in the trigonometry, we have 2n minus 1 and 2m minus 1. Here, we simply have, of course, n minus 1 and m minus 1. Um, I'm just very bad at writing the m before the n. It doesn't matter. Let me just write it. Otherwise, it kind of looks a bit bizarre that I wrote it backwards. It's symmetric, so it doesn't really uh, matter. Okay. So that's the definition of the beta function. And, of course, beta goes with gamma. So... Of course, we need to have the relation between beta and gamma, which I don't think I actually proved, and I think it's quite lengthy, the proof. So at some point, I will actually prove this particular result. So this is actually that the beta, very, very useful, uh, beta of m comma n is the gamma of m times the gamma of n divided by the gamma of m plus n and um, often in evaluation when we go into gamma of course we need to know that the gamma of uh, let, i'm gonna write as x plus one so i don't have minus ones the gamma of x plus one is of course x gamma x that's the third result we often use this three um i don't think it's anything else i need to write down if i need i probably write it <coughs> okay so this particular integral um First of all, let's write it a little bit differently. So 0 to 4, x cubed, 4 minus x to the power of minus a half dx. That resembles this thing here. The only problem is we don't have this 1. Um, and the limit is not 0 to 1, 0 to 4, but this 4 might be a clue in there. So let's see what we can do. Well, the obvious thing to do is to factorize the 4 out of this bracket so this is going to become um 0 to 4 the limit still messy and if i factorize the 4 out of this bracket is 4 to the minus a half i'll write it 4 to the minus a half as times and then the bracket will become 1 minus 1 quarter of x to the power of minus a half dx <coughs> and uh, what is that? That's the square root of 4 turned upside down. So it's going to be a half. A half x cubed. 1 minus a quarter x to the power of minus a half. Still not a beta function because we've got this quarter. But this is easy to sort out. And I think this will sort out the limits as well. Um, substitution. So let's say we use u u is a quarter x, du is a quarter dx, or dx is for du's. And uh, the limits, when x is equal to 0, u will be also 0, and when x is equal to 4, quarter of 4 is 1. So the limits, as we were expecting, perhaps, match now. I forgot the dx there. Okay. So that is equal to 0 to 1, a half, um, x cubed. Now, what's happened to the x cubed? <coughs> now, x is equal to 4u. So that's another form of what I'm just uh, substituting in there. So x cubed will be, let's write it, 4u or cubed. This now becomes 1 minus u to the power of minus a half. That is that bit there, and the dx is 4du. Let's also sort out some of this mess because a lot of numbers in here. So um, that is equal to, I'm going to pull them outside. So I'll go 64 times 4, which is 256, half of 256, 128. Okay, so 0 to 1. And what I've got left in there is u cubed. 1 minus u to the power of minus a half du. And this is now a standard beta function. So that is equal to 128 
beta, one more of this, that's the beta of four, and one more of this, that's the beta of a half. Now, to evaluate that, we use, of course, we're going to switch into gammas. So that's 128 times the gamma of four, <clears throat> the gamma of a half, divided by the gamma of four and a half. Um, what is that equal now? <clears throat> that's 128. That's a three factorial. That's the gamma of four. And uh, the gamma of, of a half, it's a well-known fact, is... <coughs> Pardon me. God, I'm choking. <laughs> it's the square root of pi. But I don't actually need to evaluate it because this will reduce to the gamma of a half and I can cancel it. So I'm going to use the recurrence relation. Make sure you have, you, you're quite good with this. 7 over 2, 5 over 2, 3 over 2, times a half, times the gamma of a half. In previous lectures, I have done this step by step. <laughs> but you ought to know um, how to apply this competently and uh, accurately. Okay, um, let me just make some space. This we don't need really. So let's get rid of that. Um, so what do we have in there? Uh, the gamma of a half is gone. So that is equal to 128 times a three factorial. And at the bottom, uh, we also have a times 246, not 246, 248, 16. And we have 105 on the denominator. Um, I can cancel a 3, so it's going to be a 2. And that's a 35. Uh, that's a 2 to the 7. That's the 1 to 8. That's to the 4 to the 5. 2 to the 5, 2 to the 12. 2 to the 12 is 4096. So that's 4096 divided by 35. Uh, I hope I haven't made any mistake with this one because um, I'll be pulling my hair if I have. <coughs> okay, let's do one more of these. So I will leave the results because you very likely will need them. And um, let's browse my book for another integral. What comes after that? I think the next one probably of a similar difficulty. That doesn't look very nice. Okay. Um, that's the integral of um, from zero to one, first of all, four over the fourth root of one minus x to four dx. The reason that four is on the numerator is probably without it it will create some like quarters or something. And by putting a four there, it ensures that it kills that uh, quarter at the very end. <coughs> okay. This has the right limits, zero to one. Um, let's write it differently, first of all. That's the first thing that I'm going to do with this one. So where's my pen gone? There you go. The four there doesn't do anything. So it's going to be a four and we have one minus x to the four, just this bracket really, dx and the brackets, of course, to the minus quarter. <coughs> okay. First of all, looking at the beta function, I need a one minus x. So my substitution is going to be y is equal to x to the four. And if we look at this, dy, is 4x cubed dx, or dx is dy over 4x cubed. The limits now, <clears throat> 0 and 1 in x, first of all. In x, if we look at the substitution, 0 there, 0 there. If it's 1 there, 1 to the 4 is still 1. So the limits are unchanged, 0 and 1. And what happened in there is we got a four. We got a one minus y now to the power of minus a quarter. But our dx is dy over four x cubed. And this four canceled. <coughs> but we have an x. 
So we go back here. X to the 4 is Y. If we raise both sides to the power of 3 quarters, that will give me X. This will cancel. X cubed is equal Y to the 3 quarters. We should be able to see that. I don't even know why I'm showing you the indices in some such a detail. So this particular one now, um, should become x cubed, remember is that, but I'm raising it to the top. So it's going to be a y to the minus 3 quarters. That's the x cubed to the top. 1 minus y to the minus a quarter, dy. And um, this is a beta. We're looking at that is one more of each. So three, negative three quarters add uh, one is the beta over quarter. And adding one is the beta of three quarters. Okay, we're gonna switch into gammas. This is something, we don't know how to evaluate quarters, but uh, something special about these numbers. So, and I need to discuss very briefly because I have done this, there's a lecture on it a very long time ago, but uh, I don't know if you will remember it and to see it. So this one is, first of all, um, this bit here is, of course, zero factorial, which is one. So that's simply the gamma of a quarter times the gamma of three quarters. Now, gamma of whole numbers, positive numbers, that is, and um, the gamma of halves, kind of 5 over 2, minus 3 over 2, they're computable. They're, the first ones are factorials. <coughs> the second ones are the square root of pi. But there is a result, which I've done, first of all, um, I've done contour integration to actually get the integral. It's fairly disgusting to do in order to prove this particular formula. So I'm going to add it. It does come up every now and again. It's not kind of like the bread and butter of beta and gamma, but it's, it's worth remembering. It says basically the gamma of x. I should have really written it in uh, in z because it, it holds for complex, but it doesn't really matter. Times the gamma of 1 minus x. There's a video for it. Um, and then it refers you as well to the contour integral because it's the, the actual proof from scratch. Uh, I mean, the contour integration, I think the, the video was about 45 minutes to actually, it's a, it's a very difficult result to prove, but it's not too difficult. I think it's got a couple of substitutions. <coughs> it's a pi over sine of pi x. So if we look at this result here, and it doesn't really matter which one you choose to be, as long as your two numbers add up to one, this will work and it's symmetrical. So let's say we take this to be a quarter, and we take this to be your three quarters. That is simply pi, okay, of sine of a quarter pi. If you use the other way around, it's the same thing because, of course, the sine of pi over four is exactly the same as the sine of three pi over four, and they're both one over root two, or if you prefer it, root 2 over 2. So this one, of course, is pi 1 over root 2, which, of course, we can write it simply as pi times the square root of root 2. Um, I do apologize I didn't plan this lecture as good as perhaps I should have planned it in, in respect of I picked this integral. I didn't really want uh, the um, to have had this result. Not that uh, I haven't done it. I want something a little bit simpler and uh, um, it, it turned out to be, oh, by the way, how do we do this? Okay, I hope you followed it and I hope you enjoyed it more, more than anything. Um, I'm going to be signing out and I'll see you real soon. Bye for now.